Hi, and welcome to Old Time Knowledge. Well, I'm going to have another kitchen table talk video today because I've got something on my mind that I want to talk about. I was out working in the garden earlier today, and I've been thinking a lot about this since a video I saw, I think it was last week. I was watching this other prepper channel, and I like the channel. I don't have anything bad to say about the channel, but in the video, the lady was given suggestions of things that you want to make sure that you have if the shtf if the sugar hits the fan that's what we're gonna say is the sugar hits the fan i got to be ladylike i'm not gonna say something else but anyway she was talking about things that you need to have if the sugar hits the fan and one of the things that she said you want to make sure you have is garden tools because she said if shtf you're going to want to be gardening you're going to need to garden to take care of your family and it was immediately a face palm moment for me as soon as she said that I was thinking you know what if you're planning to have a survival garden when the sugar hits the fan you're liable to kill your whole family because if you haven't gardened until then you don't know what you're supposed to be doing you're liable to use up any seeds that you might have and not grow anything with them successfully and you'll all starve to death and die so, <laughs> what I'm here today to tell you is, it's March. In different parts of the country, things are starting to warm up. Yes, it's not spring yet, but spring is later this month. So, I'm telling you this so that you have time now to prepare. You need to be thinking right now about starting to grow things this spring, if you aren't already growing things. Those of y'all who watch this channel who are gardeners, you know what I'm talking about. You can't just put seeds in the ground and think you're going to have crops to eat. That's not how it works. You actually have to learn how things grow in your area. Oh my gosh, y'all, there's so much you have to learn. I've got notes, so I'm going to be looking down every now and then because I want to make sure I don't forget anything. But there's a lot of things that I want to just bring up just to get you thinking. Those of y'all who already garden, you know where I'm coming from. You know what I'm talking about. So I hope you'll stay with me anyway, just so you can sit there and say, preach it, girl, because that's what I'm about to do. So anyway, okay, you have to have a garden before it becomes a matter of survival because it's about survival now. You're doing it now so that you can learn how to do it later if you really need it, like if it really comes down to it, to where you have to grow things to survive, to take care of your family, you are learning the skills that you need to learn now. Okay, so this is the thing. Just because you've watched a documentary like Back to Eden with Paul Gauchi or something with Polyface Farms or because you maybe maybe have seen some videos of... Um, Oh, what's his name? Charles Dowding or M.I. Gardner or the Rusted Garden or um, Gardner Scott or some of there's so many great YouTube channels. But just because you've watched the channels doesn't mean you know what you're doing if you have to garden. If you're just watching the channels like just as, as fun YouTube thing to do and you're thinking, well, I'm gaining some knowledge, but you're not actually putting the knowledge to work and going out in your yard and growing things or trying to grow things on your patio or wherever you have to grow things, you're going to be in for a rude awakening if the time ever comes where you actually need to grow anything. So here are some, here are some things to think about that you maybe haven't thought about. All right. And these are things that take first time gardeners by surprise. And I, you know, I say that I, I've, I mentioned in a, a previous video, I come from a farming family. Both of my parents grew up on farms, but that doesn't mean I was born knowing everything that there is to know about gardening. Once I, once I was, you know, on my own and it was time for me to start my own garden, there was a lot of things I didn't know. And, you know, I had to learn the hard way. So let's just say this. Let's say you have some seeds and you're thinking, okay, well, it's going to be it's going to be warm weather soon. I'll be able to have them outside and growing things and everything. And you're thinking you're going to go ahead and get your seeds started now. And you start growing your seeds. And you get so excited when those little seeds break open. And you have little seedlings pop up in your, in your little planter tray. 
that's a, that's a very exciting thing. And you just, or you have them there in your kitchen window or your living room window or wherever you have them. And you're seeing those little seedlings and they're just getting just as tall and just as pretty. And you're so excited and you're thinking, this is wonderful. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm growing in a garden. But there's something that's happening. Your plants aren't getting enough sun. They're getting what's called leggy. Do you know what it means to have leggy seedlings? I'm saying this because I had to learn this myself the hard way. I actually had to be reminded of this because I hadn't gardened in so long. And I was actually growing some things years ago. And then they just got really leggy. And I wondered why they weren't doing anything when I put them outside. And it's because they they had they had already shot up and gotten too tall. And they were just too spindly. And they weren't going to be able to really produce anything. When you're growing seedlings, you want to make sure your seedlings are, are compact, that they're sturdy. You, you, it's okay to start them in your house, but you want to start getting them in the sun as soon as possible. And, and if you don't have the ability to get them in the sun because it's too cold where you live, then you want to have some grow lights. There's so many different grow lights if you go on, whether you go on um, Amazon or Walmart uh, Gary Polarchik has a really good video about how to set up a grow light station. I'll link that in the comments below. Um, Gary Polarchik is the rusted garden. I don't have grow lights because I don't have a place for grow lights. Uh, not right now, anyway. So it, I don't really, I might start a few seeds inside, but it's only when I know I'll be able to just go ahead and put them outside right away. Um, because I can't keep them alive in my house and I don't have room for a grow light station. So there it is. So that's seedlings. A lot of people don't know that. And if you if you think that you're going to have get all these seeds started in the survival situation and then you've got all these leggy seedlings coming up, they're not going to produce anything most likely. They're going to be weak plants and they're just going to end up dying and you're going to be discouraged and your family's going to starve. You don't you don't want to do that. Okay, so now what about this? What about this? What happens when you plant your garden outside? Do you know anything about positioning plants in your garden? Where is north in your yard? Where is south? You know, obviously we know that the sun comes up in the east and it sets in the west. But then what about, what does that have to do with your garden and where you position your plants? What is the pattern that the sun follows as it passes over your property during the day? You have to think about these things. You know, you want to have your tallest plants on the northern end of the garden. And you want to have your shortest plants on the southern end of your garden. And the reason why is because that way you don't have to worry about the shorter plants being shaded out by taller plants. That is, unless they're plants that are supposed to be shaded. In that case, you might want to actually put them in another part of your yard where they're going to get shade anyway. What about this? What about... Um, when you uh, when you do plant different crops, how tall will they get? Because I mean, you might plant a bunch of seedlings, and you're you know you might not be sure of how tall they're going to get. But I'll tell you this: like corn is going to be a really tall crop. So if you're going to try to grow corn, it needs to be at the north end of your garden. If you're going to have something like strawberries, those can be at the southern end of your garden because they grow close to the ground, right? So th these are the kinds of things you need to think about. Tomatoes. Let's talk about tomatoes for a minute. It seems really simple. You're going to plant some tomato seeds and you're going to have tomatoes. Except, do you know the difference between determinate tomatoes and indeterminate tomatoes? Do you know what blossom end rot is? Do you know how to prevent blossom end rot? See, see, there's a lot of things that you have to know. And even if you have the knowledge up here, that's all well and good. You actually have to put it to practice. If you want to prevent blossom end rot, you need to know you need to put some calcium in your soil, most likely, to make sure there's enough in your soil before you start growing the tomato to make sure that your tomatoes don't end up with blossom end rot. Because calcium is needed by the plants so that the water can travel through the plant like it needs to. It's kind of like a vascular system, so the, the calcium helps to strengthen that. There's a lot of really smart gardeners who can explain that a lot better than me. Ask me how I know because I've dealt with blossom end rot before and it's not fun and it's not pretty. And you'll have the most beautiful tomatoes and they'll be growing and they'll look amazing and you'll be thinking, yes, I did it. And then guess what? All of a sudden the bottoms of the tomatoes start turning black and it's 
so depressing. You don't want that to happen. Okay, what about um, how far apart you should plant things? Okay, there's this thing called the square foot gardening method. Maybe you've heard of it. It might not always work depending on where you live. Like for some plants, it should probably work. But there are some things that you might grow that aren't going to do well with the square foot gardening method where you live. Where I live, for example, is very, very humid. And even though the square foot gardening method does allow for space around tomatoes, it's not enough. Everything gets too humid and that can end up causing fungal infections with tomatoes. Um, it can end up causing different issues. And so you wanna make sure they're spaced farther apart. Also, I've learned where I live, it's probably best that I just go ahead and stick with growing some um, determinate tomatoes, which means they're going to produce a whole lot of tomatoes all at once and then harvest those and then that's it. Because if I let tomatoes keep growing through the summer, the humidity and the damp is going to affect my tomatoes and I'm not going to have that much anyway. The indeterminate tomatoes grow a little bit all along throughout the summer and they just keep producing and keep producing. Whereas the determinate tomatoes produce a whole lot all at once, which is ideal, especially if you're going to be canning because then you've got your harvest all at once and you'll be able to get all those and bring those in. And they'll be, you know, when I say all at once, I don't mean every tomato on the plant, but I mean, they mostly produce all of them around the, around the same time. Okay, so then what about this? What about, um, like I mentioned square foot gardening, but then there's no dig gardening. There's like, there's gardening in buckets. There's gardening in grow bags. There's building raised beds. There's gardening in hay bales. There's like so many different ways that you can garden. You need to research all of that and find out what's going to be best where you live. If you live in an apartment, you're going to be very limited and you're not going to be probably growing a whole lot, but it's still good to go ahead and be trying to grow things every year if you have any any space whatsoever where you can grow anything because it's just, it's nice to know you can produce at least some food for your family. Now let's talk about pests. Pests is something else that you're going to have to learn about. You can't think just because you have a book or just because you've seen a website or whatever and you, you, you maybe have seen some pictures of, you know, different pests and you're thinking, oh, I, I know what the pests are. I know how I'm going to deal with the pests. Or you think you've seen some sort of organic methods for dealing with pests and, and this and that. Except if you had to, would you be able to tell the difference between a leaf-footed nymph and an assassin bug? And which one do you want in your garden? Which one is a friend and which one is a foe? Might not be what you think. Um, I raised that one because in the past I've had to learn. You The, the leaf-footed nymphs can look a lot like assassin bug when they're very little. And so you, you kind of have to know because you don't want to kill an assassin bug. But you do want to get rid of... Uh, leaf-footed nymphs because they'll they'll destroy your tomato plants for example now what about worms what's the difference between an earthworm and an earworm and a pickle worm and what what plants do they affect which one's good you want the earthworms in your garden right you want earthworms but what about the other ones you don't want those so how what how do you keep them away how do you get rid of them which plants do you want to avoid putting close to each other because they tend to attract the same kinds of pests See, I mention all this stuff because there is so much to learn about gardening. Um, there, there, um, there is no room to mess up if you're really in a survival situation. If you spend a pile of money on one of those um, sealed um, seed bank things, I've seen them on eBay and things like that. It's like a looks like a like a piece of PVC pipe that they've cut a segment of and they stuff it full of seeds and then they seal it some kind of way and they say that they've got like all these seeds in there that's supposed to let you plant a massive garden and those seeds will be good for like 20 years or whatever. But if you've never grown any of those, you don't know how they're going to do in your area. You don't know the pests that they're going to attract. You don't know whether or not you're going to even like those particular varieties of produce. There are some kinds of squash that you might think if you let them grow all the way, they're going to be really good when in fact you need to pick them early because if you let them grow too long, their, their skins are too thick and they're not good to cook. There's a lot of things you have to learn. 
All of this is to say, if you're thinking you're going to have a survival garden when the, when the sugar hits the fan, think again. It's March. The Dollar Tree probably has seeds. The Dollar General probably has seeds. Lowe's sure definitely has seeds, and so does Walmart. Plenty of places online have seeds that you can order. Go buy you some seeds, even if you just buy seeds for just a few little things and plant them this spring and start gardening now. Start gardening now when you don't need to so that you'll be ready when you do. Learn about composting. Learn about if that's even something you want to mess with. What the benefits are. Do you have a space for it? Are you going to be bothered by having a pile of compost in your yard? Are you going to be afraid of you know, like snakes that might like to hang out there when it's colder weather because the compost pile is warm. A lot of things you can think about. A lot, you know, a lot of different things you can think about. So anyway, sorry to preach a little bit, but it's just been on my mind. Don't think you're going to get tools now to put up for, you know, an SHTF scenario. Go on and get tools. Yes, absolutely. But start using them. Learn how to use them. You're not going to buy a hoe from Lowe's, for instance, and it's going to be sharp. A lot of people don't even know that you're supposed to sharpen your hoe before you go out and work in the in the garden. They wonder why their hoe doesn't work very good, and that's because these big box stores a lot of times they'll sell they'll sell tools that aren't really sharp because of a safety thing. So that means when you get it home, you're going to have to sharpen that hoe before you go out and work because if you don't, you're going to have a hard time cutting up the ground. So, just a lot of things to think about, y'all. A lot of things to think about. So, I was out in the garden earlier today. Like I said, I had a garden last year. It did great. It gets really cold. And, I, you know, I had every intention of gardening through the winter. But, frankly, I hate cold weather. Oh, my gosh, y'all. I hate cold weather so bad. So, when it was really cold outside, I was not messing with having a garden. I probably could have grown things because we really don't get much freezing temperatures here. But, boy, it gets below 50 and I'm just, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. It's just too cold for me. So, you know, so I let my garden get grown up and it just kind of got messy once the weather started getting a little bit colder and rainier and this and that. And so now I'm having to go out there and I'm having to, you know, sort of chop the ground and um, put down some weed fabric so that I can um, get some rocks down or some mulch between my raised beds because I didn't do that last year. Last year I did put some cardboard down and I put some um, some mulch that some trees that I had branches and things that I ground up and I used that like on the in the pathways but this year I want to have something a little bit better there so I'm gonna I'm, I'm working on that. So there's a lot of things I'm working on with my garden. Every year I'm learning new things. I'm not a gardening expert. I might have talked about a lot of things just now that you don't know but oh my gosh, there's so much more I don't know. And I, that's why I like to watch gardening on YouTube. I like to watch Gardener Scott and I like to watch Rusted Garden and, and M.I. Gardener and Charles. I like to watch all these people because we have all these resources available. I'm not going to wait until the sugar hits the fan to garden. I'm going to know how to garden now because that's the smart thing to do. You always want to prepare. You always want to be preparing that doesn't mean you're going to be able to avoid every bad thing that's going to happen, but at least you will have prepared. Y'all, the Bible talks a lot about preparing. It talks about ants. They don't have a commander telling them what to do, and yet they know how to prepare for winter. Think about all the animals that do. Shouldn't we be smarter than that? And shouldn't we know how to prepare and to be smart? So anyway, there it is. I'd love to know what your gardening th thoughts are. I'd love to know if you have a garden, if you don't have a garden if you've been thinking you'll have a garden if you need one but you didn't really think you needed to have one now do you think you might start one from watching this video I'll be curious and want to know what you have to say anyway I've got some resources on my blog about starting a survival garden for instance about how how to compost how to um, have a survival garden for me a survival garden just means a garden where you can save some of the seeds and you'll be able to regrow the seeds. I say that because you would think you can save the seeds from any plant and 
replant them but you can't do that for instance with hybrids because when you know if you're planting some kind of a hybrid plant then the offspring if you plant those seeds is not going to be reliable it's not going to necessarily be like the parent parents plants so anyway I'll, I'll link to some articles from my blog in the notes below too so also I am going to be doing a cooking video I'll be posting it on Saturday God willing so stay tuned for that. I have plans to make fried chicken. Just good old basic fried chicken. Fried chicken that's not too complicated. Fried chicken that's just exactly the way my family's made it for ever, forever going back. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.